How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi Battle. Today we're in my battle versus M Caliber or Jimmy42 from the Discord server in the OU tier. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the team you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun M Caliber. So they're going to lead off with Oliver, the Paldean champion, the Greninja, as we lead off with our Infernape. So right off the bat, we could catch them off guard with a choice scarf. I'm going to go for a U-turn though because they probably switch out if they think we're going to go for a mock punch potentially. So we go for a U-turn. They do get caught off guard by the um, U choice scarf. I could have gone for a close combat, but they might be sashed for all I know, especially since they've led off with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Primarina. Primarina can definitely take a hit from this thing, no problem, as they more than likely go for a Surf here or a wa not Water Shrink, and that's priority. They go for a U-turn, which is going to be indicate that they may be a physical Greninja. Which does no damage, so I'm going to say they're not physical. So Greninja is going to go back. What are they going to send in? They're going to max the Rank Master, which is going to be the Meow Scarada. So Meow Scarada is a threat to my Primarina, that's for sure. So let's go into good old Corviknight over here. So we're going to withdraw our Primarina. We're going to go into our Corviknight because it can take any hit from this Meow Scarada, no problem. As there we go, Silvera comes in. Classic Silvera, nice and shiny. And they do go for a Flower Trick though, which is obviously going to do loads of damage to our Corviknight. As there we go, flower bomb, doom, nothing. <laughs> Corvin, I just eat up for days, even a crit. Um, so let's go for a U-turn real quick because they definitely switch out here. So they withdraw the Meow Scarada knowing they can't do anything to Corviknight. And uh, they're going to go into what exactly? The Minecraft, the Rank Master, that's going to be Garganackle, right? Yeah, Garganackle comes in, we go for a U-turn. And that's going to do no damage, but it's still a bit of a bad chip anyway. So let's go ahead and switch out. And I'm leaning towards the Infernape. But I'm also leaning towards the Pre-Marina because they haven't got a lot of Surf switch-ins on their team. Especially with Green Ninja being weakened. So I think I will go into the Pre-Marina. And I know Soul Kill is going to hurt, but it's fine. If anything, we ever force a switch here or force a Terra. So I say we just go straight for a Surf here. They actually stay in to take the Surf. Let's see how well they take it. Doesn't KO them. And they're able to go for a Soul Cure on my Pre-Marina. My poor Pre-Marina gets a Soul Cure on it. And that's going to do a lot of damage to us because obviously water types get affected a bit more by Salt Cure than uh, normal Pokemon. So that's always something. So what we can do here is we can still stay in and go for a Surf. We outspeed. It prevents them from going for a Recover. They probably expect us to switch out as well. So I reckon they stay in here. So let's go for a Surf again. So they do stay in just as I anticipated. They expected us to switch out to preserve our pre-marina. But no, 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 no. As long as I can get rid of that Garganackle, I am fine. That is great for us. As we do get Salt Cured a little bit as well. But this next turn, what we'll do is we'll switch out. So in comes Jambo, the great friend. Which is going to be the Goldengo. Um, Floating the air of the air balloon, of course. They probably go for a nasty plot here. So I'm going to go for a flip turn and get on out of there. And if they KO my pre-marina, it's not the end of the world. They do go for a shadow ball. Could we live this since they're air balloon? We don't. There was a crit. I don't know if the crit mattered or not, but I'm not bothered about it anyway. So pre-marina does go down. Um, but the Goldengo is a sitting duck pretty much for Infernape or Flygon to come in. Less so Flygon because we'd have to go for a Fire Punch. But we could also go Magnezone and just get off a free Flash Cannon or a Volt Switch. I'm leaning towards the Magnezone. It does bait in the Iron Treads a little bit, but I think we should be alright. I think we should be alright. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to predict... Mm, I'm, I want to go for a Volt Switch. I don't think they stay. I, I don't think they go Iron Treads. They do, though. That's the thing. They do go Iron Treads. Um, Miguel, the Rank Master, comes in. That's going to be the Iron Treads, right? No, it's the Cerule Edge. We go for a Volt Switch. That's going to KO, I think. Nearly. Nearly gets the KO on the Cerule Edge, which is great. Um, as they aren't even focused, Sash. They just straight up didn't KO. That's unfortunate. So let's bring Infernape in once again. Infernape's going to do pretty good here. Infinity Pressure does really good against their entire team. If we get rid of that Gold Dengo. No, if we get rid of this thing. Let's go for a U-turn. So they go for a Shadow Sneak just to get some last ditch damage off on the Infernate, which makes sense. As uh, we go for a U-turn, get on out of there. And now we can go straight into like Flygon or something. So Cerule Edge does go down, which is great. And now we can just bring in whatever we want to deal with the next Pokemon that they bring in. And looking at their squad, I'd say Corviknight is probably the best one because they, they only have Gold Dengo with potentially Thunderbolt. That can touch us. In comes Oliver, which is, if I believe, the Greninja. There we go. The Greninja comes in. Let's go for a U-turn real quick, just because why not? They go for a Hydro Pump, and they do, unfortunately for us, hit the Hydro Pump, which is going to do a bit of damage to us. Not too much. Well, actually, did a lot of damage. As a U-turn doesn't even get the KO, which is unfortunate. So, 
Um, they are protein, which is good to know. They are protein, which is good to know. Let's go into Infernape. There's no way they have Water Shuriken as well. So we'll go into Infernape. And once again, we'll just go straight for a U-turn and get the KO. This Choice Scarf Infernape set is pretty cool because it actually gives Infernape some viability with speed control. They withdraw the Greninja. They want to preserve it for later. What are they going to go into, though? They go into Nitro the Great, which is probably the Iron Treads. It is the Iron Treads. I should have gone for a close combat there. But they're actually going to go into the Iron Treads, get a Quark Drive boost, which is going to boost their speed, which is terrifying. We go for a U-turn, though, which is going to do no damage to the Iron Treads. So that's not too bad. What we can do now is we can use this as an opportunity to go into Corviknight once again, or we can go to Flygon. Um, I'm leaning towards the um, Glimora, personally. So we can get Nerf Power off first. So I'm going to go into Glimora real quick. Good old Topaz. And as much as I would go for a Stealth Rock here, I can't really because they're going to go ahead and Rapid Spin. Um, so let's go for an Earth Power real quick. So they're going to Terrastalize. Uh, for some reason, I had it in my head they already Terrastalized. But what are they going to go into? Are they going to go Flying? It's Ground. Okay, so Ground type Iron Treads. Fair enough. That's going to do a lot more damage with the EQ. But we have got the Focus Sash, so we don't worry too much about it. They go for an EQ. And they are going to be neutral to the Earth Power that I dish out to them. But at least we get the uh, Toxic Spikes off, which is cool. So there's the Toxic Spikes as well. They get the Focus Sash first. And then we set up some Toxic Debris. So that's going to help against the Greninja, who's low on HP anyway. Um, and then we go for an Earth Power, which is going to do, you know, a decent bit of chip damage. Not too much, not too much. Not too little. Um, now I'm going to go for an Earth Power again, just because they probably go for a Rapid Spin anyway. As they do go for a Rapid Spin. Now, luckily, for me, for them, um, after the, the, the Rapid Spin takes into effect after the Toxic Debris gets help. So, um, we do, unfortunately, have no Toxic Spikes on their side of the field. As uh, now, there we go, the Poison Spikes disappeared from the ground around the planet. So, that's unfortunate. So, what we can do is, we haven't Terraged yet. So, we could go into our um, Magnazone. We could go for a Terra Flying. Uh, flash Cannon will really hurt everything on the team. I think that is what we do. So I'm going to go into authority. Like so. I'm going to terrestrialize and I'm going to go for a Terra Blast. And the reason I'm terrestrializing here is purely because I know I can take an Ice Spinner. And all I need to do is take out its Iron Treads. And Infernape can come through and just Flare Blitz the rest of that team, which would be amazing. So we terrestrialize into a Flying type, which is going to be great. Um, as they more than likely do go for an Earthquake expecting the Terra Ice. Unless they have Iron Head. But we're Terra Flying, not Terra Ice. Um, and this Terra Blast will definitely KO the Iron Treads, that's for sure. So, there we go. Let's see what they go for. They go for an Iron Head, expecting the Ice, probably. As a, we go for a Terra Blast now, which is definitely going to KO the Iron Treads, which is amazing. So, there we go. Terra Blast comes through. Down goes the Iron Treads. So, Infernape should, in theory, be able to take on the rest of their team. Which is great. Absolutely fantastic. So, let's see how this plays out. In comes Oliver, the Palea champion, which is, of course, the Greninja. Um, we just let we just let this go down. There's no reason not to let it go down, um, to be honest with you. They go for the pump. Protein turns them into a water type, and they hit the Hydro Pump, which is going to KO my Magnezone, unfortunately. So, uh, Magnezone does go down, but it's fine. It's fine. It did good. It took out the Iron Treads, and now we can just go Infernape and spam Flare Blitz. That's all we need to do. Spam Flare Blitz. So Infernape comes in, and because we're Choice Scarf, we outspeed their entire team, which means this is an Infernape video. So let's go for a Flare Blitz real quick, and as long as they don't have Water Shuriken, which they clearly don't, we go for a Flare Blitz that's going to take out the Greninja, which is amazing. So we took out, with Infernape, we took out the Cerule Edge, the Greninja, and now if, if, if we're lucky, Goldengo and Meowskarada. So in comes Max, that's the Meowskarada. Now if they have Sucker Punch, that's going to sting a little bit. Or if the Focus Sashed as well, that's also a possibility. So let's go for a Flare Blitz first. So they go for a Sucker Punch, which is going to turn them into a pure Dark type. It's going to sting a little bit as well. Um, and then we go for a Flare Blitz, which is definitely going to take them out. No, it's not. Never mind. The Recoil takes me out, though. As Infernape does go down. So Infernape still did really good. It severely damaged the Meowth Grada. Took out the Greninja and the Cerule Edge. So I think it did pretty good, to be fair. So what we can do now is... We can just go into, hmm. We can go into Corviknight. And hopefully this Meowth Grada doesn't reverse sweep us here. Or whatever it's called. When the, the make a comeback, make a comeback. So um, let's go for a Roost first and foremost. Just see if we can get some health back. They go for a Sucker Punch, which would have definitely taken us out if we went for an attacking move. 
And then we go for a roost, which is great. So Corviknight back to near enough full HP is amazing. And uh, now all we need to do is go for a U-turn, and that'll definitely KO the Miascarada. They do withdraw the Miascarada to go into something else, which is going to be the Goldengo. Jambo, the great friend. We get a free U-turn off, breaking its air balloon, which is amazing. So now Flygon can come in and Earthquake, pretty much. So we get a crit U-turn, which does no damage still. No big deal. And uh, we're going to go back. So we can still keep Corviknight around for the Miascarada, which we need to. So... Let's go into our Flygon real quick. There we go. Goggles comes in. And as long as this thing's offensive, we should be able to take out with Earthquake. As long as it's offensive. So let's go for the Earthquake. Earthquake comes through. Now that the Air Balloon's gone, cleanly takes out the Goldengo, which is amazing. No critical hits required. And there we go. So now all we have is the Meowth who Flygon... If, as long as, if they don't have Triple Axle, we can take a Flower Trick. We can definitely take a flower trick if, if if they don't have triple axle. So let's go for a fire punch. They go for a knockoff, which is going to turn them into a pure dark type. It's going to definitely sting my Flygon. Nearly gets the KO, but we do manage to just live. Go for a fire punch and take out the Miascarada. And that was a very close game. GGM Caliber. That was a really fun one. I did enjoy that one. Um, so yeah, GGM Caliber. On to the next game. The second battle is against Cody from the Discord server in the OU tier once again. We did try and battle for the first game, but we ended up disconnecting about a quarter of the way through. Um, so we're not going to recreate it. We're just going to kind of go again. I know a little bit about his team. He knows a little bit about my team. So why not, eh? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead off with Primarina. And I'm going to just go ahead and flip turn. If, if it's an unfavorable matchup, I'll just flip turn. Or if it's the Rillaboom, I'll just um, switch into Corviknight. No problem. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun, Cody. So they're going to lead off with Gudra, which is a good lead. I lead off with my Primarina. There we go. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip turn. There's no reason not to. Let's go for a flip turn. We can't really take on this Gudra, no, no, no doubt in my mind. So they do go for a Flash Cannon, which is going to sting a little bit, but not too much. Um, as we go for a flip turn, get a bit of chip damage, break potential Sash. Not that they have Sash on Hisu and Guja, that'd be pointless. Because Hisu and Guja can take hits for days. Ain't nothing no co in that thing. So what we can do now is we can go Infernape. Um, I am leaning towards the Infernape, so that's what I'm going to do. There we go, Storm Wukong comes in. And I'm assuming they're going to go into the Dragapult, expecting a close combat. So I'm going to go for a U-turn here. And the reason I'm going for a U-turn is purely because A, I think they're going to go for the Dragapult switch. And B... Why not? We go for a U-turn. They do stay in, which is really ballsy of them. Because we could have a close combat that thing into Oblivion. And uh, they probably go for a Draco. So I'm going to go back into my... Um, I want to go back into my... I want to go Corviknight. We can't do anything. Or Primarina. I think I will go Primarina. So there you go. Monroe comes in. Looking amazing. I love shiny Primarina. It's such a cool, cool design. Um, they go for a Surf, which is definitely going to do nothing to us. And then what we can do is, you know what? I'm thinking, let's just Moonblast this thing. Let's just Moonblast it. They go for a Flash Cannon. I think we win the 1v1 with the uh, Moonblast and stuff. So let's go for the Moonblast. There we go. Yeah, that's doing a bit more damage than their Flash Cannon is. So let's go for another Moonblast. They go for another Flash Cannon. It's Gudra versus Primarina. Let's see who can come out on top here. Moonblast comes through. Boom. We get the Special Attack drop as well, which is amazing. Bit higher of a chance to get the Special Attack drop than it is the Special Defense drop on the Flash Cannon. So let's go for a Moonblast once again. They withdraw the Gudra this time. What are they going to go into to take a Moonblast, though, other than their own Primarina? No, it's going to be the Primarina, unfortunately, for them. So Primarina comes in. We go for a Moonblast. This is nice and shiny, too. Bit of chip damage. We get the special attack drop, which is amazing. And then what we do is we go for a... F I, want to, I want to go for a flip turn, but I want to go for a Moonblast. I'm going to go for a Moonblast. Screw it. Let's just get as much damage on their team as possible with Primarina. They go for a Moonblast, which is not going to take us out. And then we go for another Moonblast, which should do a lot of damage to the Primarina. And the fact that we've weakened these Pokemon, they go for a Moonblast. They win the Speed Tie as down goes my Primarina. So it was a Speed Tie, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. A um, bit of hacks, but <laughs> I got the hacks with the Special Attack Drop, so I'm not really complaining. So anyway, we can go Infernape now and we can finish this thing off with a uh, Thunder Punch if you want to. Or we can go into Glimora. Get the Stealth Rocks up. I'm leaning towards the Glimora for the Stealth Rocks. Because they probably go for a flip turn anyway, right? So we'll go Glimora. We'll get them Stealth Rocks up because they haven't got a Hazard Spinner. 
So that's 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 something to make note of. Go for a stealth rocks. Get them up. That's gonna be permanent damage against their entire team every time they switch in. They go for a hyper voice, which is definitely gonna take us down to our sash. If you're wondering why that was super effective, it's because Primarini gets an ability called Liquid Voice, which converts all sound-based moves into water type moves. Good to know, right? Right, anyway, let's go for a mortal spin just to get some damage off. So we go for a mortal spin. Bit of damage on the Primarina, nothing crazy. We get the poison though, which is really useful. Um, and uh, we get rid of any hazards on our side of the field, which well, there was none. So I go down to the Hyper Voice. Glitmora did really good though. Got the Toxics, uh, got the Stealth Rocks off. It got the poison on the Primarina, which is going to be great. And now we can probably just go into Infernape and U-turn here. I think Infernape is going to be key to winning this game though, if we get rid of our Dragapult, especially. So um, with that in, in mind... Uh, let's go into Flygon. Flygon can definitely take care of this thing. So we'll bring Flygon in like so. And what they might do is they might go ahead and switch out into the uh, into the Rillaboom. But I'm going to go for the Earthquake anyway because they might just let it go down. They do let it go down. What I was thinking is go for a Fire Punch, but I wasn't confident Fire Punch would finish it off from the range it was at. And then we just get slapped in the face with an Ice Beam or a Moonblast, which wouldn't be very good. So Flygon KOs the Primarina, which is great. And the Hisuian Gudra is on Death's Door, which is amazing. Iron Hands comes in. There we go. Iron Hands is here. This thing is terrifying to us because we know it's going to have Ice Punch or something along those lines. If I remember the first time we battled, it did have Ice Punch. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go into Corviknight. See, so yeah, I'm going to withdraw go to Corviknight because why not? And they probably, if they brought Iron Hands in against the Flygon that had Earthquake, they're probably going to Terror. I'm trying to remember what terror he had the first time, because he did terror the first time, and I can't remember what it was. They go for a Drain Punch, though, which does no damage to Corviknight, um, but it is going to recover their HP from the Stealth Rocks. However, the Rocky Helmet is going to do a bit more than that, so that's that's unfortunate for them. And um, What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go for a Brave Bird. I just want to get as much damage on on these Iron Hands as possible. But they go for a Swords Dance. That is terrifying. So Swords Dance Iron Hands is terrifying. And we go for another Brave Bird, though. That's definitely going to do a little bit of chip damage. Not too much, though. Not too much. As uh, now, we go for another Brave Bird. There's no reason not to. There's the Thunder Punch. And that takes out the um, Silvera. But we do get the Rocky Helmet chip, which is great. And now, I'm pretty confident... Wait, did they Terror already? They didn't Terror, did they? No, they haven't Terrored. So, now what? That's the real question. I'm leaning towards the Infernate for the Flare Blitz. That's what I'm leaning towards. Um, I'm also leaning towards Flygon. I think I'll go Flygon. I think I'll go Flygon here. And they're probably thinking, hey, he's going to Earthquake um, to finish me off now that he can. So I'm going to go for the Terra Steel Dragon Dance first. Because they probably Terra, right? Yeah, I'm going to go for the Terra Steel Dragon Dance. And hopefully we don't waste our Terra here. They do withdraw the Iron Hands to go into what? The Rillaboom. The Rillaboom comes in. That's great. So Rillaboom is in. It's nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. Gets the Stealth Rock chip, but it does sell the Grassy Terrain with the Grassy Surge. There we go. And there we go for a Dragon Dance after Terrestrializing into a Steel type. So we don't have to worry about no um, high horsepower from this thing because Levitate. We don't have to worry about no Grassy Glides. Nothing like that. We don't have to worry about it. So we go for the Terra Steel like so with the Levitate ability. Pretty OP really. Um, and we go for a Dragon Dance. So there we go. Dragon Dance comes through. So now the real question is... What does more damage? Is it the scale shot, five hits, so base 125 dragon move, or base 170 or whatever it is, 175 fire type move that's super effective? I think scale shot does more. We could miss though. Let's go for the scale shot, screw it. Let's go for it, there we go. We do hit the scale shot, which is great, after a plus one. Let's see how this plays out. As um, it's not gonna KO. And as long as we can hit five times, though, it's going to do a lot of damage. We hit four times, which is unfortunate. We get the defense drop, which is really unfortunate. But we do get a speed boost, which is really great. They go for a knockoff, though. That's going to knock off our loaded dice. And it gets a crit, which KOs us, which is really unfortunate. But every cloud has a silver lining. At least we weaken severely the Rillaboom. That's every, every cloud has a silver lining right there. That's every cloud has a silver lining. So um, we've got two Pokemon left. What do we do? I say we go Infernape now, and then we U-turn. I think that's the way to go. Um, I think we have to do some Vault Turn stuff with... Um, I'm going to go for the U-turn. I'm just going to go for it. With the Magnazone. So hopefully U-turn KOs the Rillaboom here. They withdraw the Rillaboom, so we don't get the KO, which is unfortunate. And they're going to go into the Dragapult. So the Dragapult coming in is actually pretty cool. 
as there it is the dragapult is here we go for the u-turn and if we can KO this dragapult infernape does go pretty hard against their team it goes pretty hard against the team they haven't terrored yet though which is the real bad thing so um if i remember rightly this thing's physical with a heavy g boots i don't know what the moveset is though i only saw psychic fangs that's it so um they probably have phantom force and dragon darts right so let's go for a flash cannon here i don't see any reason not to they go for the dragon darts maybe they're expecting us to double into the uh, infernape but maybe that's also the best move they have to hit us so we go for a flash cannon that should definitely take out the dragapult it's choice spec analytic boosted we get a crit, don't think the crit mattered because again, choice specs, analytic boosted. Plus they got a crit against my Flygon, so I ain't bothered. In comes the Iron Hands. This thing is a threat right now. We do get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great and all. They may go for a, flash, a, a Swords Dance here. So I'm going to go for a Flash Cannon. They go for a Drain Punch though, which is going to nearly take us out. But we do get some, you know, they're going to get some health back. But we do get some nice little chip damage off with a flash cannon, which is definitely going to be beneficial to us. There we go. That's weakened enough to the point where we can take it out with the um, Infernape's Flare Blitz, uh, hopefully. So let's go for another flash cannon. Why not? They go for a drain punch. That's going to take us out. It's going to give them some HP back. So they should, should, they should still be in range for the Flare Blitz based on the amount of damage that the flash cannon was doing to a resisted hit. So Magnetism goes down. Let's see if Infernape can pull this back because Infernape did really well in the first game. Did really well in the first game. I don't think they can one shot us with Drain Punch either, unless they have Earthquake. So we're going to the Infernape, like so. The Rillaboom is weakened. I think we can go for a close combat, personally, and not have to worry about the uh, recoil. I think we go for a close combat. I think we go for a close combat. They do stay in, they do live. We do get a defense drop, and we do go down to a Drain Punch here. As there we go. So GG Cody, that was a fun one. So uh, we did lose the second game, which is unfortunate. Um, but it was a nice 4 row victory to Cody. Can't win them all though. Cannot win them all. GG Cody, that was a really fun one. I enjoyed that one thoroughly. GG. But anyway, here is the team tried out. If you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all the wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.